you're very passionate about various things you do in your life. It may not be aspects of your work right now, but there are things that are very, very important to you. And the aim of these leadership development programs is really to think about how we connect with people's values. What's important for people, what's significant in their lives, but also by doing so, how we build engagement and confidence in people's work. So I'm here to debunk that role model and say that leadership should be many different forms. It's not the stereotypical Anglo-Saxon male, and actually a first place to start in respecting diversity of leadership is to start asking some different questions. And I had a, uh, someone who I later looked back was a very influential mentor for me. He wasn't the mentor you'd hold back as a pin-up boy for mentorship. And each of us, through the next four years, if you stayed with that team, he took you apart and he invested time in you. I wasn't a confident kid. I built my confidence. And for me, it was a major life experience. And it actually shaped my values. So the work I do with refugees isn't just kind of something where I say, well, I've got a great life, let me give back. It's because I've realised there are people in, in the world that have a hell of a lot tougher than I do. And that's one of my core values. This is a social structure. In many, and it's more, in, in many ways, it's more powerful than just knowing the organisational structure. It's who talks to who in the organisation. And right in the centre was a couple of very influential people. Uh, and this group, I think we had a pretty forward-thinking CEO. Uh, and, and she... She said to, I, we said to her, you must love it being the centre. You're the world, you're like the sunflower. And she said, you know what? It drives me crazy because every single thing, from purchasing a pen to refit outs of offices, I have to approve. And I'm, I'm running ragged just clearing my inbox. So we did a very simple intervention. We said to the group, stand in your, your areas, stand in your different functional groupings. We got them out in a big green space much like the beautiful area in front of us where the lake is, and said, stand in your functional groups. We're then going to give you an individual social map of who you talk to. That's where the science came into it. The, the practice is very simple. And so everyone got their own personal network, who they talk to, who's two degrees of separation from them. We then said, we want you to do something. We want you to add people who you don't speak to, who aren't in your own social group regularly, but you'd like to talk to. We wanted you to do that to help you do your job and help give you a broader perspective of the organisation. People were starting to talk outside their areas and those support structures weren't just relying on senior leaders. It was people out of your area. And let's face it, if someone comes up to you, while we can't change the behaviour of individual managers, we can change the average social structure. And actually say, how do you build a reservoir of talent to look at the networks amongst your peer leadership groups? Mm -hmm.